interview and job search strategies. I have a very special guest today, very honored and grateful that you're on. Um, I have Neil Anderson. Hey, Neil, how's it going? Hey, I'm great. Thanks, Gary. Thanks very much for having me on. Neil, um, why, don't you, uh, why don't you start off and tell us about how did you start in your current role? Sure. My current role is I'm working as a, an online freelance trainer. So before I did that, I was actually working as a classroom trainer for another company. And what happened was I needed to do some training myself. So it was just over the Christmas period. I had a, a, some free time and I wanted to learn something. And then I discovered these online courses and Udemy. And then because I was already working as a trainer, I thought, oh, I wonder, you know, what kind of courses they have for the stuff that I teach myself. And yeah, I found courses on there and some of them weren't so great. And I thought, well, yeah, I can do that. So I started off doing it just as a side hustle to make some money on the side and also really just for something interesting to do. And that then turned over a bit of time into actually doing that full time. And that, that, that's the only thing that I do now. Wow. Um, so that's, that's amazing. What, what excites you? What excites you most about your, your choosing your profession you're in right now? Uh, a couple of things really working for yourself is great. I love that. I don't have to get out of bed at a certain time any day. If I want to take a day off here and there, I can do that. Basically, I can. I just control my own time. I control my own schedule. I don't have to answer to anybody. I still have to get the work done, obviously, but it's great that it's on my own terms. So that that's one thing I that I love about it. And another thing is that. I love helping other people as well. And because I'm doing this online now, it's very scalable and I, I can really help a lot of people. And because I've been doing it for a little while now and I, I've got quite a few students now, it's turned out that every day I get messages from students telling me that they've passed an exam or telling me that they've got a new job or a promotion. And it, it's great. Like it really brightens my day when I see that I'm able to help people. Wow. That's nice. So you say, what, what, tell us about your, your courses that you have on, on Udemy. Okay, sure. Yeah. I have a few free courses on there. So I have an introduction to cloud computing. I also have an introduction to SAN and NAS storage as well. So they're really aimed at maybe people that are already working in IT now, but they're quite new and those are new technologies for them. So it gives them a really good grounding in cloud and in storage. I also have other courses in NetApp storage as well and in the Cisco CCNA for networking. They're more complete rather than introductory level courses and they're designed, you know, more advanced level for somebody that's wanting to advance their career and also probably get the certification as well. I, I have a I have a confession to make, Neil. Um, I didn't tell you this, but I I'm actually enrolled in your I enrolled in your SAN course, and I I'll, I'll tell you it's very nice. <laughs> so it's a it's a great course, by the way. Just let you know that. So uh, just put that. There. Thanks very much. Yeah, um, yeah. So let me ask you. So um, you know, based on your experience and taking the, you know, so many people want a shortcut and they want to say, um, well, how do I you take that 10 year experience and, and knock it down to two years and learn what I need to know? So based on, on that, what, what advice would you give somebody? They're working at McDonald's right now and they're, they're making, you know, whatever wage an hour. And they, they're just like, I want something different. I, I just graduated high school. Maybe they're a single mother. Maybe they're, um, you know, just like what they want to do something. What, what advice would you, would you give them to get into the field knowing that they're working at McDonald's, let's say. Sure. Well, I mean, with my own background, it's really not that 
different from that anyway. I I did not go the traditional route of going to university out of school and doing a computer science degree. So the situation that I found myself in, I was in the Air Force and I was a mechanic originally there. And I knew that when I got out of the forces that I would want to have, you know, a, a good career. And I was interested in things like marketing at the time. And so I thought, well, you know, what would I have to do if I wanted to get a marketing job? And basically the, the only path was to go and study marketing either at college or at university. And that would probably take around four years. And then at the end of that, I would come out and I would get an entry level job. And the only way to get up the ladder would be basically by putting the time in. You know, you're, you don't see any marketing managers that are 21 years old, right? Just doesn't happen. You know, you have to go, you have to study for a long time and then you have to put the time in to work your way up. It's a bit different, what's well, very different with IT careers. And actually just going into IT is, is really a shortcut itself when you compare it with a lot of other career choices. Because with IT, you don't have to do that long university degree. What you can do is the different vendor certifications instead. And you can self-study for them to do the exam. You just book the exam for any day that you want to. So the quicker that you study, then the quicker that you can do the exam. And employers are looking for these certifications. So rather than having to go to university for four or five years, you could go and do multiple certifications. You could get those done over a few months rather than a few years. And then that's going to help you move quickly up the ladder. So if, if I was talking to somebody that's working in McDonald's right now that does want to have that kind of career, I'd say that really the easiest and the quickest way to do it is to focus on certifications because they give you a, like a guided learning path. So there's organized curriculum that you go through as you study for the different exams. So you, you do really learn what, employers are looking for when you're doing these and because you get the certification when you pass the exam you can also prove that you've got those skills to the employers so it's really for somebody that that is working in a job that they want to get out of right now they want to get you know a really good career and also with good pay as well a really quick way that they can do that is by going into it and the best way is via the certifications wow that's nice. Okay, so you're a you're a network guy, right? Originally, yeah. I'm kind of I'd say like I'm a, a cloud and data center guy now. So for people that, that are already in IT, I've a really good thing that you can do is rather than just focusing on one particular area of IT, such as networking or servers or virtualization or storage, you can still specialize in one area, but if you learn the other areas as well, then that does make you more attractive to employers. So I started off originally as a networking, in fact, even before I was a networking engineer, actually I was a systems administrator on Microsoft operating systems. And then I added networking from there and then after that, I've also added the other cloud and data center technologies, such as storage. So you're a, you're a sysadmin. Um, can, can you tell me like a typical day that you had in a, in a systems administration job? Yeah, well, that, that's, that's way back in the day. If you my, my first job, I was working for a small company. So I was the IT guy looking after everything. So... When I would come in in the morning, I would change the tapes for the backups. And then typically throughout the day, I'd have people coming up to my desk saying they've got different problems. So I was doing, you know, like front end help desk for helping people with simple problems on their PCs all the way through to if there was a problem with a server, it would be up to me to fix the server. So I, I was looking after the servers, I was looking after the routers and switches, the firewalls, really everything. Wow, so you're like 
you're all in one uh, person. That that's a wow. That's a lot of knowledge that you that you learn. The, you you mentioned cloud. I, I know that's a that's a new tech. That's not a new technology, but I know the one thing that it's big, you know a lot of people ask me is what um, what's what's cloud. You know what what type of um, job is somebody who has who does um, who works say like uh, AWS or Azure. What what do they do? In a typical day like what what exactly do you know i mean I, I don't know myself sure yeah well these people it it would be unlikely that your first job in it would be specializing in cloud and the reason is that the way that things work in cloud are exactly the same way as they work in traditional environments and what I mean by that is, like, imagine you're working for a company. They're not using cloud. So they've still got the servers. They've still got the PCs on the desks. They've got the routers. They've got the switches, the firewalls, et cetera. Well, when a company starts using cloud, it's just that rather than having all of those compo components being managed in their premises, they're just doing the same jobs, but it's off-premises in a cloud environment. So to be able to manage that, you need to have the same skills as if you're working in, in an on-premises environment. So typically, you will already have been working on-premises, and then because you've built the skills there, it's very easy to transfer them to a cloud role because really you're doing the same kind of thing. Oh, okay. I see. Hey, do you see companies like, uh, do you see companies, you know, um, taking that on? Like, are they proactive about doing the, the cloud thing or um, are they still like kind of shaky with it in your experience? Yeah, because it's, it's becoming, you know, more, well, it's, it, it's been around for a longer time now. It's not such a new thing. So most companies typically don't want to be at the bleeding edge of a new technology. They don't want to be the ones that are finding all the issues and all the problems with it. They want to wait until that's all been ironed out and then they can move to it. Well, cloud's been around for, for a fairly long time now, so it is very stable. And a lot of companies are using it because they can get cost savings there. They still have their on-premises infrastructure as well. I mean, the people that are doing the work are still sitting in a desk with a PC on it and they still need connectivity out to the internet. They still need to get their mail and this kind of stuff. So typically when cloud is being used, you're going to find that it's, it's in combination with a traditional infrastructure, but the company can get some cost savings by rather than buying all the hardware in their own data center and looking after it there, they can leverage using a cloud service provider for that. Okay. Um, this, this is not in the list of questions I was going to ask, but I'll ask it anyway. And it's um, about jobs. So, um, so oh, we're, we're remote jobs, basically. Um, let's say somebody in whatever country wants to work overseas, and let's just say um, the U.S., for instance, right? They want to they want to work overseas, but they're not exactly sure um, what to do. And um, how, how, like, there's a term called digital nomad, and it's basically like somebody who works in other countries or works somewhere else other than maybe where they're from and they have a job. Do you, uh, can you talk a little bit about that? Do you have any friends or you have any experience with like working in another country basically and working remotely? I mean, cause from my perspective, it's just, you're so much, I think you work more if you work from home and I think you're just happier in general, but can you talk on that? Do you have any experience with that? Yeah. Um, I, I've worked overseas for quite a long time now. Um, over, yeah, since, since about 12 years ago was actually when I, I left the UK and I've been overseas since then. I was in Australia first wow. and then I've been staying in Thailand for around 10 years now. Um, the way that I got that, so is maybe not what the listeners will really want to hear. The way that it worked for me was that I, I did my CCIE, which is, as you know, like a higher level qualification 
because I did, I, I had the specific goal that I wanted to go and, and stay in a hotter country. And I thought that if I had the lower level certifications that I did at the time, you know, why would a, a company take me from overseas when we can hire somebody with the same qualifications at home? You know, of course we wouldn't do that because it's, it's difficult for a company to bring somebody from another country. So what I did was I did the higher level qualifications that so made me really stand out from other people looking for jobs. And, you know, that, that was enough that it w made me attractive enough to employers that they would actually would move me from overseas. So I did that. And then that got me, I moved to Australia originally. And then I, I moved over to Thailand from there. So my own experience probably isn't really that helpful, but what I'm doing now is now that I've got my own training business is that I actually hire freelancers myself quite often, quite regularly. And I use a website called upwork.com for that. Have you heard of Upwork before? I have. I've heard of that one. Okay. So you very often the people that I'm hiring are in countries like Philippines. I've also hired people from Afghanistan, places like that. And it gives them a, a really good opportunity to earn money on the side because they can work from home. So yeah, if any, you know, if anybody's thinking of doing that, of doing a side hustle, if you've got a skill already, um, really basically anything, then you can register with upwork.com but there are a few other sites as well that, which are similar but upwork's probably the biggest one and then people can hire you on there so that's maybe just for a simple one-off job or sometimes it can be for a longer contract as well so yeah that that's a pretty good way for people if they want to be working from home they want to be working remotely an easy way to get into it is by doing that wow Oh man, that's awesome. So many, so many questions are involved that I want to ask about that. Like, what was it like living in Australia or working in Australia? Yeah, that was pretty good. It's actually not as hot as you think. <laughs> uh, coming from the UK, like whenever we hear about Australia, it's always, you know, sunshine and beaches, but it, they do have a winter over there as well. So yeah, I mean, it, it was better weather than in Scotland, but not quite as good as I was expecting. The The job I was doing there was doing classroom training, so that was fun. The company I worked for was a really fun company. So yeah, that, that, was, that was pretty good over there. Wow. You said also Thailand, right? Is that what you said, Thailand? Yeah, that's where I've been for about 10 years now, and I can't see myself ever leaving. I, I really love it here. The weather is great here all year round. It's like 30 degrees in sea. So it's hot the whole year round. The people are super friendly. The culture is great, very relaxed. And yeah, I, I, I love it here. Now, obviously, I'm an IT guy, so I'm going to ask this question. What is the internet like in, in Thailand? What's, it, uh, what's the internet like? Yeah, it's great. I'm on broadband here. I've got fiber to the home and it's, it's super fast. I can get satellite TV here if I wanted it. Um, other thing, it's actually funny because I've, I've got my dad over right now. He's maybe going to be moving out here. And I had some other family members that were asking me questions, you know, you know, like what about the doctors and this kind of thing? Actually, medical is brilliant over here. It's better than the UK really because the, the quality is just as good but the price is so much lower so yeah there's there's really everything's great the, the, the one thing I miss about home is Christmas Christmas here isn't the same but everything else is I would say better wow wow that's so exciting wow so nice just to travel and you know go go to those places and and see what it's like what um um, so you have a, you have a, your own company, right? Do you have it in Thailand and all that? Yeah. So I don't know if I would really call it a company cause it's just me. I mean, I'm the only one, but yeah, I'm not working for anybody else right now. I, I just work for myself just doing the training. What, what's your, uh, can you talk about your, your company? Um, tell, tell me your company name and, and, um, 
um, you know, what you sell basically, what do, what do you offer to the marketplace? It's the training courses. So I do give a, a load of stuff away for free as well. Cause like I said earlier, like I genuinely really do enjoy helping people. Um, obviously I still need to pay the bills as well. So I do have some paid courses as well. And yeah, the cost of living is really low over here in Thailand. So don't need to sell too many and it, it makes me comfortable over here. And it's uh, yeah, flatbox.com is where people can find all the training. Do you, uh, do, you have a, do you have like a Twitter or a Facebook or a YouTube that people can reach out to you or Instagram? Yeah, the the YouTube is also Flackbox as well. So that's F L A C K B O X. I I am also on Twitter and Facebook as well, but not so active there. So the, the really the best way for people to find me is via the website, which is flatbox.com, or my YouTube channel, which is Flackbox. I, I do have as well as the IT stuff. I've also got just general career advice videos there as well which I know your audience would probably be interested in. Oh, talking about, uh, you know, you're t what do you, you mean like um, taking the time it takes to get a job and kind of shrinking it down because of other people's experience? Is that what kind of stuff you have? I mean, I, I have a video on, on how to write a resume. If, if, it is if you're working in IT or looking to get a job in IT. So I, I have stuff like resume writing, and also tips for interviews as well. That's on your YouTube channel? Yeah. Oh, nice. I'm going to check that out. I'm actually, uh, yeah, that's nice. Yeah. Neil, I appreciate, I really appreciate you coming on the podcast. I really, really mean it. Um, you know, obviously I have, I, I take one of Udemy courses and very, it's very good. Um, highly recommend it to anybody. Uh, it's the SAN course on Udemy and just look up Neil Anderson. Uh, in Udemy, U D E M Y dot com. Um, Neil, is there anything else you'd like to just closing thoughts or talk about? Um, I don't know what what would you like me to talk about, God? Do you have, do you have any like topics in particular? Yeah, so like um, basically, you know, you come in and okay, I know one networking. So a lot of people are like you know CCIE or CCNA, Cisco Certified Network Associate. What does a network person do? You know, they come in. What are they? What is their typical job like? Uh, low, like the low level, like entry level. Um, I just got my Cisco cert, or I, I got a networking job. You know, low level networking job. What do I do? I come in the office. What do, What is my job? If for when you're first entering into a networking job, it's particularly if you're working for a big company then you'll be doing mostly help desk tickets, most likely. So you will be seeing the, the actual staff in a company when they've got an issue where something isn't working and it turns out that it is a network-related problem, then you will be troubleshooting that. If you're the, the entry-level person, then if it's complicated, you might have to bump it up to somebody more on third-line support behind you but for the simpler networking tasks, then yeah, it's, it's going to be help desk tickets. So helping users, if they've got any network issues. After that, you know, you can then, once you've got a little bit more experience then you'll be the person doing the third line support as well, and you'll be handling those more interesting and, and more difficult problems. Uh, Neil, how about the, like a storage admin? Um, I know you talk about uh, SAN on your Udemy course that I've, I've taken. What, what does a, like a storage uh, administrator do, um, you know, in, in IT or what, what's their typical job like? So a storage administrator is going to be working mainly with the server team because your normal staff, their PCs are not directly connected to storage. Their PCs are going to be using the company's servers, for example, the mail server, maybe a database server, that kind of thing. And it's going to be those those servers, so the mail server, the database server, a web server, et cetera, that are going to be using back-end storage behind there. So the server team who are looking after those servers, they're going to require storage for those servers. They're going to require disk space for them. So what the server team will do is they will request 
that's uh, an amount of storage space. So for example, if a new server is going to come online, it's going to need some storage space. So the server team will then ask the storage administrator to provision that storage for them. So they're going to be provisioning storage for new servers, but also going to be monitoring the existing storage infrastructure. Just make sure that everything's running okay. So some, one of my, uh, the, pod, the podcast listeners asked me the difference between the different um, storage vendors. Like they're like, oh, like they said, uh, EM, like uh, AMC and uh, NetApp. Is there a difference? Do they, I mean, do you have to learn both of those basically? Do you have to learn like all the, because there's, I think there's a lot of storage um, vendors out there. Do you have to learn all of them or is there one that you can, you can recommend like honing in on? You don't need to learn all of them. So it, what it is, is they all have very similar products. And whenever one of them comes out with a new feature, then the other vendors will very quickly copy that. So you'll find that all of the main features that are supported on one vendor system are going to be supported on the other vendor system as well. So the only difference is the actual tools that you use to manage the storage system, meaning the actual, normally it'll have a web-based interface. You go, as the administrator, you go into that web-based interface and you configure the storage system there. So the web-based interface is going to look different for the different vendors, but what you're doing there is really always going to be the same. So one, once you've learned all the theory for one particular vendor, it's very easy to then transfer that to a different vendor. You don't have to learn the whole thing again. All you have to do is learn the actual interface and how you can figure it in there. Oh, I see. I see. Um, I wanted to ask you about the, the CCIE. Um, what, what does a Cisco certified internet network expert, what do they, what do they typically do? Um, you know, cause I, I know it, it's, it can be overwhelming, uh, to some folks, like obviously the Cisco CCNA is the low level and then the CCIE is the high end level. Is there, you know, another, um, and like Hawaii, uh, Huawei, Huawei, I think it is, right? They're kind of, I, I think yeah. they're similar. What, you know, somebody's taking Huawei, somebody's taking um, Cisco, which one should they take? Or, or do you need, how do you get that high level knowledge basically um, with without doing like the Cisco stuff? Or do you have to have the Cisco CCI to have like the ultimate, ultimate like knowledge basically and 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 also what do they what do they typically do like a ccie what does it typically do in a day okay a ccie is basically always going to be in a senior networking position uh it typically when you're working in networking you you will start off by doing the ccna and then there's also another qualification in between the CCNA and the CCIE, which is the CCNP. So as you're working in a job, honestly, the CCNA is a really good certification in its own right. And I, I actually often say this when people think about doing the CCNP after that, they think that it's going to be a lot more work. But really, the CCNA covers about 90% of what is in the CCNP anyway. So the CCNP is like a top up to the CCNA and it just gives you some more detailed knowledge about the networking. The CCIE is actually like, it is a, a big step up because for the CCIE, you have to do a hands-on lab exam. So it's not a, a two hour exam administered on a computer. You actually have to go into a lab center and in there you'll be given uh, an exam sheet which has got a list of tasks that you have to do and you're configuring that on real equipment and it's an eight hour exam so to do that really you want to have had several years experience already once you get the CCIE it, it it's actually a life-changing certification you know I was talking earlier about that's what got me the move overseas if, if I didn't have that then you know, a company wouldn't have brought me from another country to come and work for them. But having that CCIE is, is a big step up. It's a very, very respected qualification. 
and it's, it's really your, your golden ticket if you do get that. So if somebody's got the CCIE, typically they've been working in networking for several years already, and they're going to be in a senior position. If they're not in a senior position already, then getting them the CCIE is going to, is going to get them into that senior position. So typically, you'd be working for a larger company, and you'd be doing more of the design of the networking, or if they were offering services to custom, like networking services to customers, where you were selling customers' equipment, then the CCIE would be the person that would be talking to the customer doing the, and doing the designs for the customer as well. Wow. Wow. That's, I had no idea that's actually what they did. That's fun. Wow. Yeah. That's really cool. Do you, do you guys, uh, I know there's, I've heard like there's a, a number and you get paid for that number. Is that how that works? How do you, do you actually get money for having your number? Your CCI number? No. <laughs> no, it's actually the other way around. You, you have to pay Cisco to keep your number. So when, when you pass the CCIE lab exam, you get given a number. So that's your, like, every, every time somebody else passes the CCIE, they get the next number up. So I'm, I'm number 17108. I think if somebody passed the CCIE now, they'd be up to about number 60,000. So, and then the next person it gets, they just get the next number up there. Um, it's because when, if you're applying for a job and you, you do say that you're a CCIE on your resume, then you'll always put the number there. It kind of proves that you're not making it up, that you are actually a CCIE. Oh, so, so, so you couldn't just like, you know, they could check, right? Basically they could find out. <laughs> Yeah, they can they can very easily check that you that it's genuine. Yeah, <laughs> nice, nice. T tell them, like Cisco is that the? I know networking. Do do companies only use Cisco? Do they use any anything else like other um, networking uh, technologies, or is it just Cisco? Mostly, there there is also Juniper, who have been a competitor for Cisco for a long time. There's also Huawei as well, and HP are actually pretty popular. Um, but in large enterprises, typically they will be mostly Cisco. Cisco have, have got by far the largest market share. They've also, they're also the company that, that's had the, those certification programs going by far the longest time. So employers are, if they're hiring for a networking job, there's a, they've most likely they're using Cisco equipment and it's going to be the Cisco certifications that they're actually looking for. So if you are, if you're looking to get into IT and you're looking to have a networking job, definitely like no question Cisco certifications are the way to go. If, if I, if I'm from say China or from the Philippines or from Thailand for that matter, and I get a, and I get a CCNA, um, does is that the same thing as if I'm from, say, the U.S. or the U.K. and I get a CCNA? Is it the same thing or is it different because of the – you know, like college degrees are different in different countries. Yeah. But is it – what is it like for the networking or systems, you know, certifications and whatnot? Exactly the same. It's the same exam. So you don't have to – you don't have to, like um, – you know, you have the same credentials as somebody in, say, in the U.S. if you're from Thailand. It, same exact uh, cert the credentials yeah the same oh that's nice so it makes it easier for uh like if i go for a job if i'm from thailand and i go to a job in the u.s it's the same exact oh that's nice yeah that's good so i mean if, if somebody was really anywhere in the world and they wanted to go work overseas if you get your ccie that will get you a, a job overseas no matter what country you're from essentially right no no matter where you're from. Wow, that's nice. So you could be like, say, from India or Maldives or South Africa or wherever, yeah. and just yeah, in, anywhere. Wow, that's nice. That's good. Okay, Neil, thanks a lot uh, for coming on the podcast. Um, really appreciate it. Um, again, thank you very much for coming on the podcast. Um, yeah, thank you. Okay. My pleasure. Thanks, Gary. It was fun talking to you.